The Senator from California. James Baldwin once said that, quote, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. And that is why we are here again today to face the history of lynching in this country. From 1882 to 1986, the United States Congress failed to pass anti-lynching legislation when it had the opportunity more than 200 times. We have an opportunity once again to right this wrong and face the ugly history of lynching in America. And let's recall this stain on America's history, lynching. It was an act of terror. It was murder. These were summary executions. Victims of lynching were dragged out of their homes. They had ropes wrapped around their necks. They were hanged on trees. In many cases, they were castrated and burned as crowds of people watched and applauded. And the premise underlying all of these acts was that black people were not full human beings. According to the Equal Justice Initiative, lynching was used as an instrument of terror and intimidation 4,084 times during the late 19th and 20th centuries. In 1955, Emmett Till, a 14-year-old African-American boy, was lynched in Mississippi after being accused of offending a woman in her family's grocery store. When Emmett Till's mother held open a casket, the casket for her son at his funeral, the image of his body became one of the starkest examples of racial violence in America. These lynchings, I think no one can deny, were acts of violence. They were needless, horrendous acts of violence. And they were motivated by racism. Lynchings were crimes that were committed against innocent Americans. And these crimes, for the most part, did not go without consequence. They rarely went with an arrest or were followed with an arrest or the charging of a crime or the prosecution of a crime or the punishment for the crime that it was. And these, of course, were victims of these acts who never received and their families never received justice in our courts of law or in their community. This is an uncomfortable history. To think of it, to talk of it, understandably, makes many people uncomfortable because of the violence that we are describing, because it is part of America's history, because it is something that we have never truly acknowledged and reconciled in terms of the crime it was, the crime it is, and how we in our laws must recognize the seriousness of it. But today, we have that opportunity. And we recognize the context in which we discuss it today. Just in the last month, we have had difficult and high-profile conversations about slavery and blackface, issues that we claim are part of a bygone era. However, it is clear that in many ways, our past is our present. Lynching is not a relic of the past. In 2011, three men in Brandon, Mississippi, murdered an African-American man. His name was James Craig Anderson. They robbed him, they beat him, and they ran him over with a truck. That was modern-day lynching. And let's be clear, no one should have to fear for their life because of their race, national origin, religion, or sexual orientation. We must confront hate directly in our country. So Mr. President, in December of 2018, our colleagues in the United States Senate, I am proud to say, voted unanimously in a bipartisan way to pass the Justice for Victims of Lynching Act, which I introduced proudly with Senator Booker and Senator Scott. 
After 100 years and more than 200 failed attempts in the United States Congress, the United States Senate finally spoke the truth about lynching. Today, I have reintroduced the bill and will ask the Senate to pass it again. The Justice for Victims of Lynching Act is a historic piece of legislation that would make lynching a federal crime for the first time in American history. With this bill, we finally have a chance to speak the truth about our past and make clear that these hateful acts should never happen again, and God forbid they do, we are now making clear there will be swift, serious, and severe consequence. We can finally offer some long overdue justice and recognition to the victims of lynching and their families. And as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, quote, the time is always right to do what is right. I now yield my time to my friend and colleague, the great senator from the great state of New Jersey, Cory Booker. Mr. President. I recognize the senator from New Jersey. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I want to thank Senator Harris uh, for her partnership and leadership on this bill. Uh, and I also want to thank my colleague and my friend, uh, Tim Scott from South Carolina, for his leadership and partnership on this legislation. Uh, as Senator Harris just said, uh, this is not the first time we've come down to the floor uh, of the United States Senate to, to implore this body to recognize lynching for what it is, bias-related terror. It's not the first time we've come down to this body to try to right the wrongs of history after numerous attempts, dozens and dozens, during the height of lynching in the United States. This body failed to act. This body did not stand up to protect American citizens and condemn the horrors of lynching. And in December of last year, uh, as Senator Harris and I were standing here, uh, this body actually made a historic decision. It was a profound moment, emotional moment. Uh, they made the decision to pass the Justice for Victims of Lynching Act by unanimous consent, no opposition. After a long, painful history, a shameful history in our country, and a shameful history in this body, the United States Senate finally voted unanimously to make lynching a federal crime. But unfortunately, the bill was not taken up in the House before the end of the last Congress. And so here we are today with the hope and expectation that for the second time, this body will make history by passing federal anti-lynching legislation, and that for the first time in history, this bill will actually become the law of the land. Senator Harris, reference the Equal Justice Initiative, which did document over 4,000 cases of racially motivated lynching between 1877 and well into the 20th century. Lynchings that were used to terrorize, to marginalize, to oppress black communities, and to kill human beings, sowing deeper fear, inequality, and injustice for generations. The use of lynching to inflict racial terror is, terror is ugly, disturbing. It is a tragic part of our history. But we know that its legacy does not just live in our history books. Less than two weeks ago, an actor, an activist, was brutally attacked in Chicago. Two men yelling racial and homophobic epithets. Lynching is not a relic of the past. We are seeing in the present its pernicious evil, and we still have yet to confront this in this body. Bias-motivated acts of violence and intimidation in America are actually on the rise. Hate crimes are on the rise. For the third year in the row, hate crimes against black Americans are on the rise. Hate crimes against Jewish Americans Americans are on the rise. Hate crimes against LGBTQ Americans are on the rise. Muslim Americans are on the rise. This is unacceptable. Justice for the victims of lynching has been too long denied. And as we look forward, we must collectively in this body make a strong, unequivocal statement. The last time Senator Harris and I came to the floor with this request, I read from an expert of a speech given by Congressman George Henry White, 
the first member of Congress to introduce an anti-lynching bill more than a century ago, and the last black member of Congress to serve for decades following Reconstruction. This was the last speech he ever gave on the floor when Reconstruction subsided, voting rights were violated, and you would not see an African American back in the U.S. Congress for decades and decades. His last speech was the last speech that any black American congressman would give. And he said, for, for, for many decades, and he said in 1901 about the terror of lynching, he said this evil peculiar to America, yes, to the United States, must be met somehow, someday. For too long in this body, in the United States Congress, we've relied on the inevitability of someday when it comes to addressing this profound injustice. For too long, we have failed failed to ensure justice for the victims of lynching and failed to make clear that the in the United States of America, in this great country, lynching is and always has been not just a federal crime, but a moral failure. We have the opportunity right now, again, to make history in this moment, right now, to recognize the wrongs of both our history and our recent past, to honor the memories of those so brutally murdered, and to leave a legacy that future generations can look back on, knowing that after some 200 attempts in this body in more than 100 years, that on this day, this moment in American history, notably Valentine's Day, <laughs> as one leader once said, what does love look like in public? Justice. That this day, we can right this wrong. I would like to recognize my colleague from California. Thank you, Senator Booker. And happy Valentine's Day to you. <laughs> um, Mr. President, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to the immediate consideration of S-488 introduced earlier today. The clerk will report. S-488 a bill to amend Title 18, United States Code, to specify lynching as a deprivation of civil rights and for other purposes. Is there objection to proceed to the measure? Without objection. I ask that the bill be considered read a third time. Without objection. I know of no other or further debate on the bill. If there's no further debate, questions on passage of the bill. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The bill is passed. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you to all of our colleagues. And Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Without objection. Thank you. Mr. President. The Senator from Texas. Mr. President, late last night we received the 